Hello, my name is Peter Lavers and welcome to this edition of the Customer Centricity Corner brought to you by Customer Attuned Limited. This is a series of discussions digging into the different aspects of customer centricity in the B2B sector. In case you don't know what that is, that's, that stands for business to business, i.e. where your customer is another company rather than an individual. Our focus in these short sessions is on the practicalities and how to apply the theory to make our places of work more customer centric. The subject today is customer centric account management, and I'm delighted to introduce two guests, Mike Pepe and Ed Rotman. Ed and Mike have vast experience in setting up and running account management teams in IT, industrials, manufacturing and utilities industries in North America and Europe. I'm sure you'll quickly realize the passion they share for B2B account management, customer experience and trust. Ed, Mike. I'd like to start with a slightly unusual question. I'd like us to begin by thinking about the uncustomer centric way of managing client accounts that you've seen over the years. Please, could you briefly describe some of the barriers and the obstacles to customer centricity that you've come across? Ed, maybe you'd like to start. Sure, Peter, thank you. Uh, I think one of the let's say constant battles that businesses face is the uh, is the juggling between resources devoted to long-term returns versus near-term returns. In much of what we're talking about here with the customer-centric approach and, and uh, partnerships, it's more of a longer-term return than let's say quarterly or this month kind of uh, focus. And I, I feel like when companies are, let's say, overly focused. Of course, we always have to be focused on near-term profits, but overly over-focus on near-term returns will always be a hindrance for this kind of activity and any of, uh, let's say, futuristic uh, kind of investment. Another area that I think is, is worth mentioning, especially in recent times, as we've gone through supply shortages and such in the past, you know, two, three years. I've seen cases where shifting leverage um, after, let's say, decades sometimes of, uh, of overcapacity and, and a, a certain leverage structure in an industry, these supply shortages have shifted, uh, in many cases, where the leverage lies. And, and you see cases where customers view this as an opportunity uh, to capitalize on capacity uh, and forget about the the things that got them to to that point, let's say the customer centric approaches and longer term views and and look to let's say capitalize too much on the on the shift in in leverage. I think that can also be an obstacle to to what we're discussing here today. Well, thanks, Peter, for that question. and Ed, yeah, you know I, I agree with what you're saying. Um, you know, for the most part, account management is, is, is just such a huge field and customer centricity is really big. So when, when you bring up the term, you know, uncustomer centric account management, it makes you pause, right? It makes you pause and, and step back for a moment and go, okay, what are we talking about here? And, and to me, what we're talking about is the supplier side of the relationship for the most part, although I do hold the customer accountable in, in many regards for how they for, for, for their end of the, the situation, right? They, they can't act one way and expect their supplier to act the other way, but the supplier always has to act above and beyond reproach in terms of trust, in terms of honesty, in terms of meeting their commitments, in terms of everything that they do, okay? They need to hold the standard, um, even when all else around them with partners and everything else may not be in that situation. So, I, you know, I, I, I wanted to, there's lots of things I can talk about, but the, the one thing I wanted to really mention here is, uncustomer centric account management begins and 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 really um, uh, ends in a way with the leadership of the supplier it is critical that that supplier's culture right follows the principles of customer centricity and 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 you know you may think oh wow that but it's small things and it's big things let me give you two examples real quick gentlemen 
One, I've seen it time and time again where a supplier has a strategic relationship with a customer on a big, important project, you know, board level approval. If you fail, it makes the news. If you fail, you lose your job. And they're constantly behind the scenes, bad mouthing their supplier to everybody that they come across in the company. So that, that, what kind of trust does that engender within your organization for this strategic partner that you pick to do this project? So number one, let's not, let's not talk bad about our customers. <laughs> let's not talk bad about our suppliers because the, the, the suppliers do it at the same time. Internally, they are bad mouthing their customer and that just creates a standard and an expectation that's not about viable. The other thing too, I would say is, one important aspect that I see, Peter, is the life cycle of a customer and maintaining that history. It, it, it's incumbent upon the supplier to maintain that history of the relationship because things are gonna change. How often have you run into a situation where the supplier, the account manager changes and executive changes, and you have to go to the customer to get the history of what's going on and vice versa. The, the customer's vice president may decide to change positions or there's a change in leadership. It's incumbent upon the, the supplier to bring that person up to speed. So the supplier always has to be the, the maintainer of the record of the, of the relationship. And, that has, and that's a big responsibility. Most organizations unfortunately fail at that. They just think it's feeding a CRM system, but it's not. And it needs to be open and transparent and shared. And I, 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 I see that as two un, um, <laughs> uncustomer centric ways of doing account management. One, you're talking ill, and two, you're not maintaining a history of the relationship. Wow, thank you. That that that's really really well put. Both both of you really appreciate that, and and I'm sure that uh, many of our our listeners here uh, and watchers will uh, will. Um, resonate with some of the things that you've uh, that you've said. Um, so, what can be done about it? Uh, what hints and tips uh, do you have in the next couple of minutes uh, for people who want to be champions for customer centricity in their own places of work? Uh, over to you, Mike again. Okay. Well, I, I kind of hinted at the answer somewhat on on the previous question, <laughs> right? Be, be, be trustworthy, be honest, and don't badmouth your customer anytime. I, I've actually seen account managers meeting at lunch with a customer and they're badmouthing a fellow employee, customer employee. That, we can't do those things. That is, un, that is not customer centric behavior. So always be above board, always be above, always speak kind of people and keep that history. But you know, one of the, one of the big things I think is we, it's our job. It's our job as account managers, and, and you want the company to back you up, but sometimes it's not there, to protect the customer from themselves. And what do I mean by that? I mean, they, they often want, they've never done this before sometimes. They're not the experts, that's why they hired you. And they're asking you for advice, and the advice you're giving them is very important. You need to pay attention to organizational change management, there's gonna be a lot of resistance, and we need to spend money on training. And the leader of the project, the leader of the whatever we're working on for, for, the, for the customer says, no, nah, you know, I, I, we're, we, we cut that out of the budget. We're not going to spend a lot of time in that. Most suppliers would say, you know, OK, I, I just want to keep this moving forward. We'll do the best we can. We're going to give them what they want. We're going to give them what they want. Instead, that's not, that's not customer centric behavior in my mind. In my mind, customer centric behavior is you're politely persistent in taking the case forward to do the right thing to make a successful outcome because that's why they hired you. And then and only then, if the leadership all the way to the top says, no, we don't want to do it that way, then you, then you can acquiesce. But it's well documented that you gave them the best advice. So protecting the customer from themselves is, is critically important, especially when we're the expert, especially when we've done it before. We have the expertise, we have the know-how, and that's what they're counting on and we need to give them appropriate guidance. That's customer-centric behavior in my mind. Brilliant. Ed, what, what would you like to add? Uh, thank you, I, and I'm interested, I'm interested in listening to these comments. I feel like I've uh, learned some things here. 
from from Mike today that I've made notes on. Uh, if you're just getting started in this process, or perhaps even if you're if you're far enough down the road, but you're looking at expanding it, one thing I think to consider is which customers you select for the partnership-based approach. Some customers are are their culture is compatible with uh, a longer term view and and starting with a vision and then laying out the resources and groundwork to to be successful whereas the culture in other customers let's say it's a culture of commodi commoditization where they insist on internet bidding for um, uh, supply in in uh, over a year uh, the kinds of things where um, it removes the value, let's say, of joint work. Um, and so one item I think to consider is, uh, is customer selection, whether you're just getting started or looking at expanding this approach. Another item that I'd like to talk about is in this work, which I feel like is, is moving toward a, a more future focused uh, method of creating value, is to begin with the end in mind. Begin with where do you want to be with the customer in terms of, let's say, things like joint design, uh, collaboration on e things as, uh, as long-term as patents uh, I've been involved in in the past, where you are working toward, let's say, the, the most cost-effective design in an industry by, by using each other's technology. In, th in those cases, you're going to make uh, short-term investments, spend money, and um, and work through issues for a long-term gain. And I, I think in those instances, beginning with the end in mind, communicating a vision, and keeping the internal organization along with the customer or supplier on track it becomes, uh, let's say, more doable, and, um, and having the, the end game well communicated is, is a vital part of of much of this work. Thank you so much, Ed. Um, so appreciate uh, both of your insights uh, that you've that you've shared in in just this this short time. Um, for me, something that's come across from from what both of you have said is just that importance of leadership and and the role for customer centricity and breaking out of that commoditization. You know. Customer centricity isn't a tactic that's going to particularly add to, to this quarter's sales, but it's going to give you a sustainable, trust-based, long-term uh, uh, business. It's part, it should, it's part of your purpose. It's part of your culture, and the leadership need to live and, and breathe that. And, and, and thank you so much for, for, for sharing your, your insights with us. Um, so that, that concludes the discussion. Um, if you'd like to... Uh, if you like what you've heard today and you'd like to hear and see more, please go to our website, which is customerattune.com and get the links to the rest of this series and see what else we do, which, of course, includes partnering with Mike and Ed in the US. Our purpose is to build a culture of customer centricity based on trust to establish sustainable, mutually beneficial and profitable B2B relationships. And do get in touch if this resonates with you. Thanks for listening. And thanks again, Ed and Mike, for speaking.